welcome guys uh steve welcome. uh good afternoon steve, we, ha we have we uh, have one uh we have mr bilal he joined from he joined from uh saudi arabia so it's also uh it's also a trainer and uh, say my gosh. so Mr. Jamil introduced him to me uh, today. So he's here. Oh, okay. We're going to give him uh, some time also to contribute. Oh, it's fine. So our time is six o'clock. So we are going to start by six o'clock. So we have to give uh, others, uh, others time to join. So we don't need to, we don't want to start when they have, when some people have not joined and they will miss, they will miss some part of the discussion. Steve, blow your background now. You said? I said blow your background. Yeah, I'm trying to. Bilal. You can use yeah, this, yeah, uh, you can use virtual background, Steve. The way I'm, the way I'm using my own now. Uh, okay, yeah, can I even get it? <laughs> huh? I've tried. I've tried it once, but it's not. Um, uh, uh, the, the, if your network is not too, uh, not too okay. strong, if your network is not too strong, it will. Uh... But Femi, this one you did. How did you do it? I like this one. You have to pay me for it. <laughs> I go pay you now. You know, say you be my own. No, no, my friend. I've done it before, but I'm trying to. This my own. Be like this. My own uh, uh, consumes a lot of uh, memory. But your own looks very uh, sharp. It's at the background. We just do the set, but not now. We say it after afterwards. No, we are about to start. Uh... Yeah, yeah. What about that one after? Hi, Mr. Bilal. How are you, Mr. Bilal Gilani? Yeah, hello, guys. Good, uh, good evening, everyone. How are you? We are good. We are good. Uh, nice to have you with thank us. Thank you so much. Same here. Same, same here. Thank you to Jamil. It's a great pleasure connecting with you people. And uh, definitely we'll be in touch. Sure. So I would be grateful if I can get the time and start because I have some other meeting as well. So I would be grateful if I can start the session. Uh, yes, you will. You will speak after me after I've introduced the. Sure. After I've sure. introduced the topic, then I will give you opportunity to contribute. Uh, sure. Sure. Thank you so much. Yeah. So we'll be starting by six. Let me send. Uh, let me send link to some people. No worries. It's weekend now. Let me I try and get something to, to drink. What? Yeah, uh, Mr. Stephen, I may not be able to speak up today, but I will be joining the session. Mr. Bilal will speak on my behalf and definitely he's much more experienced than me in particular electrical safety. So uh, he will continue and I, I will be participating, but I will just be listening. Is is fine. Thank you very much. We, we really appreciate you, and I'm sure that many people will benefit from Bilal, and I'm sure that this will not be the end. So we we'll have we'll have more time and uh, more outing with uh, Mr. Bilal. So the the aim is just to is just to give back to the society, like you like you know. It's not a uh, it's not a paid uh, program. So people are not paying us and we are not collecting money yet. So it's just to give back to the society. That is that is what we are doing for now. So if in future money start coming out of it, we'll still benefit too. Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Health, safety, and wealth of people is money for us sir. if people are safe they are getting knowledge from from this discussion that is the biggest pay for us i believe 
Yes, it's, you know, as a health and safety practitioner, our major goal is to save life. So if, if we save one person, we have achieved a lot. We have achieved a lot, so. Exactly. I'm, I'm just completing one of the IOSH membership survey for 2023, and there are a lot of questions related to safety. And while I'm attending this workshop, I'm also working on that. Uh, just, just to let you know that why I like to join these type of uh, seminars and why I was transferred into safety because my father was died on a construction site back on back in 1991 when I was quite young. So safety is just not a job for me; it's a passion. So that's how I take safety seriously. So I'm always willing to assist and I'm always willing to support the people when it comes to the safety. So. So that is just a kind of my statement, okay? And I believe that you guys have also the same passion and same uh, statement. So let, let, let's just keep moving on and helping the people with the knowledge and expertise that we all have. Yes, it's, the passion is, is what drives us. It's not, uh, it's not majorly what we derive from it, but the passion. Because in most situations, you find out that the type of uh, discouragement we get in the job is enough to discourage you. So, but with the passion, we continue uh, continue from there. So, I will be. Just for your information, I will record this session just so that we have the, so that we are going it's to my have background, it. Is my background blow? Can you check? Yeah, it's okay. Okay, okay, fine. <laughs> you are a genius, you know? So you have to charge uh, Johnston, you charge him so he will pay you. We'll do that after the session. <laughs> Okay, we are about to start. Uh, good evening, everyone. We are happy to have you here today. My name is Johnson Mwala. And uh, just like every other week, every Thursday by 6 p.m., we have a webinar where we discuss uh, health and safety topics. So today we are talking about lockout, lockout. So, and I have with me uh, many experienced professionals that will be joining me in discussing this topic. I will, uh, I will start the presentation. After that, the others will join. I will share my screen so that everybody will see what I'm talking about. And uh, Okay. We are talking about a lockout target procedure. This simply means the procedure that you implement to prevent the release of energy. Okay, so the ultimate goal for long attack procedure is to prevent accident. So it's just it's like a proactive measure to prevent an accident. Okay, I will run through the slides. I will run through the uh, what I uh, prepared. Then we'll start the discussions. Okay, I'm not going to say everything. So what is that list, lock out and tag out? We say it's the placement of a lock and tag on isolating device to ensure that the equipment is controlled and it will not be re-energized until the device is removed. So what it does is that it will prevent the re-energization of the equipment while the maintenance is going on or 
while uh, somebody is working in a particular uh, energized uh, environment. So, okay, what are lockout devices? There are devices that utilize positive means such as keys and locks to hold energy isolating devices in safe position. So not every device could be a local device. So anyone that is capable, it has the potential and it's strong enough to withhold that equipment from re-energizing. So it can only be classified as a local device. So if you use like a wire, or a cable to hold a device, you can't say you have locked it out. Because if there is a, uh, if the energy source comes uh, in full force, it cannot stop it. So not all devices are classified as local devices. There are measures to check if, uh, uh, if the local uh, devices are strong enough to withhold that uh, energy source. Okay, so what actually are energy sources? Energy sources are, it could be electrical, could be a hydraulic, could be chemical, thermal, gas, water, steam, in any form, any energy source that, uh, if not controlled, could result to injuries. So these are the energy sources we are talking about today. Okay, now mechanical uh, isolating device. An isolating device is a mechanical device that physically prevents the transmission or release of energy. Examples are disconnect switches, slide gates, valves, blocks, blind uh, flanges. Okay. Now, in this, uh, e stops are not included in isolation uh, devices as at now, as at this moment. Okay. So these are the energy sources, mechanical energy, hydraulic energy. Okay, now we say that every person working on a machine or equipment must have his or her own lock and tag. So as a procedure, you cannot work on another person's lock or on another person's tag. The reason is, uh, is obvious because the person might remove his lock without your notice, okay? So if you are not uh, the one that locks that uh, device, it's not safe for you to walk under that lock. So you must have to, you must have, to uh, have your own lock and your own tag that you are working in a safe uh, environment. Okay, these are procedures for specific produce, procedures for uh, uh, implementing lockout. First one is to shut down the equipment. Second, you implement uh, isolation. You isolate the equipment from the energy source. The next one is to block the uh, equipment from residual uh, energy sources. Then the next one is to secure the equipment. Okay, these are color of uh, tags that can be used. Red tags, you have red colors, you have yellows. So what are the red tags? The red tags are, means extreme danger, and it means do not operate or do not remove. Why do we use red tags? You use red tags when the hazards, uh, when the person is walking near the, uh, isolated equipment or when the person is working on the isolated equipment. Okay, you can also use red tag where the equipment is very unsafe and you know, it's on in, in an unsafe condition. The red tag must be properly filled. The name of the person isolating the device, the date, the time, the, the type of maintenance or the type of activity ongoing in that equipment should be properly specified. Okay, these are examples of a uh, red tag, or example of locked out and uh, tag by out equipment. This is an example of uh, where you have group of people 
or different uh, people working in same uh, isolated equipment. You see different uh, lock and different tags. So it simply means that more than more than two people are more than two people are working in that uh, device. So it should not. Uh, nobody should work on another person's uh, lock or tag. Okay. I'm branding off. So yellow tag is used mostly for uh, information. For instance, if the if the equipment is in a bad shape, it's not uh, operational, you can use it to uh, and, uh, inform people not to operate it. So it means maybe there is no maintenance going on at that particular equipment, but it's out of uh, it's out of uh, use. It's not uh, safe to use. So yellow tag can be used to for notice. Okay. So the process verify, what is verify? For you to, uh, before you start using an equipment, first you need to verify it. In, after tagging it out and locking it out, you have to verify that if your lock is uh, properly, uh, is working. What this simply means is you might have uh, locked it and maybe you didn't lock it effectively, didn't lock it out uh, very well. And you assume that you have uh, succeeded in locking it out and at the end it will fail. So the process of verification simply helps you to verify if what you have uh, locked out is effective, okay? Just for instance, maybe use a key to lock it. You can just try to pull it to see if the key will break or if it's actually holding it. So that is the process of uh, verification. And it's very important that uh, the locked out uh, device is verified uh, properly. Okay, now there are two types of uh, employees that worked in a, in a LOTO procedure. One is authorized person, the other person is uh, affected persons. The authorized person or authorized employee is an individual who uses the lock, lockout or tagout and verifies the procedure on a machine before, uh, before the activity starts. So this person is authorized. He works in that equipment and he's he has to implement the LOTO procedure, okay? Then the other person is affected person. Affected persons are majorly people walking around that uh, an equipment that has been de-energized or has been locked out, okay? The people walking around there that if anything goes wrong, they will be affected. The energy source will get to them. So these are the affected persons, okay? So the job of the authorized persons, they plan the job, they notify affected persons that there is an activity going on in that area. They are responsible for shutting down uh, the equipment. They are isolate the energy from the source. They lock and tag out the isolating devices and they ensure that uh, all residual energies has been dissipated and they verify the isolation. The affected Persons, what are their job? They stay clear from the area as much as possible. They give distance and they never attempt to assist. They are not, it's not part of their job. It's the authorized person that has to do the job. They never interfere with the law for the tax and they report all unusual situations. Okay, so we have. I've run through the slides, and uh, today is not a, a one person's talk. We have about six people lined up to speak. So I just introduced the topic so that we all refresh our memory about lockout tagout. Then we start the discussion proper. So I've uh, I've re-strategized on how we deal with these topics here. We'll give time for everybody to contribute, yeah. say what you know, what you don't know, and ask your questions so that it will end in uh, one particular discussion. Okay. And uh, without wasting much time, I will call on uh, Mr. Bilal. Mr. Bilal, you introduce yourself. Tell us uh, 
where you are, your designation, your uh, qualifications, so that um, most of us that doesn't know you will know you too well, then you continue. So thank you so much. I would like to uh, introduce myself with my slide. So if you kindly just uh, allow me to share the screen, please. Try it again, try it now. Okay, Yo, now it's fine, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, inviting for this session. Uh, I'm representing here my company's Meridian Quality Management Professionals from Saudi and uh, Innova USA. Both are one of the leading training providers in the industry. My own quick introduction, uh, I'm working as trainer and consultant and as engineer for over 15 years and working as trainer. So my main area of specialty is electrical safety. I'm certified from American Board National Fire Protection Association in electrical safety. One of the few people in the region who are certified on this topic. So this topic is, you can say completely in my area of command. And uh, along with that, I am certified safety professional. I'm grad IOSH UK. I am UK certified trainer, auditor in ISO 45001. Then my uh, overall technical background is also the electrical because I have my graduate in professional satellite communication. I have my bachelor's in electronics engineering, master's in electrical engineering. And then I'm working as mentors, trainer and consultant with different boards in America, France, and in Pakistan as well. So that's just a quick introduction. Just to motivate you, the people, this is the electrical safety certification from uh, the American Board National Fire Protection Association on the standard NFPA 70E. So this is something which I will introduce you uh, to people uh, from uh, LOTO point of view. This is another safety certification, certified safety professional. Uh, moving on to the topic, uh, my friend has uh, introduced uh, already the basic definition of LOTO and the basic terminologies involved in that. So I would not take much time on that, but just to motivate you, the people, I would like to mention that the uh, most, uh, uh, we can say, detailed guideline standard we have right now for the LOTO program is the OSHA standard 29 CFR 1910.147. That's basically the 1910 shows that it represents the general industry. And uh, this 1910 is for the general industry. And then the other part shows that it's the sub clause of the standard. So according to the OSHA standard, uh, in, in the LOTO, actually we are trying to control the hazardous energy. That hazardous energy can be mechanical, hydraulic, chemical, pneumatic, electrical, and thermal. So when it's related with the chemical, normally a process engineer, an expert process engineer is dealing in that. If it is related with the uh, mechanical or pneumatic devices, the mechanical or hydraulic engineers are dealing with that. Me being an electrical engineer and certified electrical safety professional, I can say that this is my area of expertise, the electrical loto. But we are controlling the hazardous energy and we are saving the people from that. So all areas are there in that. Uh, definitely in this limited time, we cannot cover the training, but we can just touch the introductory part and we can just motivate ourselves that we will learn in the future uh, this topic. So this is actually my intention that in the next 10 minutes, I would just try to motivate the friends on this topic. Uh, the three terminologies are very important. My friend have, uh, has already introduced them. Uh, Authorized, affected, and others. These are basically three very important terminologies when we talk about LOTO. First of all, the authorized person or authorized employee is that master person or that authority who can apply the log or tag or who can remove the log and tag. So that's basically the lead person who has the authority on the overall operation. And here is the relevant OSHA clause for that. Affected employee are all those people who are working around that area. For example, 
the authorized person has locked the equipment and now there are some maintenance people who have to do their maintenance job on the equipment so all those people who are not holding the keys or who are not authorized for the tag and they are in those areas working on that particular equipment those are the affected employees or people and all those people who are neither involved in the authority neither they are working on the equipment but they are present on the work site in the vicinity all those people are called other employees so always try to remember these three basic definitions definitely you should have a complete energy control program where you should have the energy control procedures the employee training periodic inspections then the proper policy the shift change it's not that much easy uh, i would say first of all if you are dealing with the electrical loto you should have the particular education experience and skill to do that it's it's not possible that we move some person on an electrical plant and give him the loto command who has no experience related with the plant operation or maintenance you can only train a particular technical person in loto if if he is already is skilled in that industry so that's a very important prerequisite we should remember it's now it's not a simple skill that you just pass on to someone and he will start doing a job in that area as an expert no you have to pick the expert and then with the loto training and with the loto program you will give that person authority in his area of expertise to exercise his authority to save the people from hazardous energy or sources some in, in some ways uh, on some points you have to apply the tag with lock as well and in some cases uh, there are equipments in which we don't have provisions to apply the lock so there we can have the tag but as per nfpa 70e in that case the authorized person have to be physically there uh, like a person should work or behave like the lock and he cannot leave that place if simple tag is applied there the overall control sequence is very important that you prepare for the shutdown you uh, make your machine and equipment properly shut down and isolate and then you also test that there is no residual energy sometime we just shut down the equipment but you know uh, the energy is not completely drained especially in the electrical cases there are sometime the stored energy due to capacitors or inductors or sometime in pneumatic devices there are some uh, pressures who are uh, engulfed there so you have to ensure that all the residual energy is uh, removed and the equipment is not only shut down but and say a safe work condition has been established and safe work condition has been tested that's basically the isolation or verification my friend was also talking about so after that the loto device application is there and once you are done with all this stuff there can be the release of uh, stored energy and verification of the isolation so definitely we need a complete day at least to discuss all these topics shift change is a very uh, critical activity because what happens during the shift change that the person who is leaving he is in a hurry he have to pick his shoes he have to pick his like maybe some coat some jacket some hat some keys wallet extra extra many items so the person who is leaving he is in in his own mindset and the person who has been just there he is settling himself down so uh, definitely there is a particular you can say uh, additional hazard involved when there is the shift change so the shift change has been especially addressed by osha in uh, 1910.147f4 so that has to be specifically addressed i would request all the participants to mute their mic please so that we can uh, have the clear sound moving on uh, in the appendix a you will find uh, in the osha program you will find the sample loto program which will guide you at how to write the loto procedures how to list the different items how to decide the author authorized affected and uh, the other employees right so from osha let's uh, come to the point of nfpa 70e 
what is nfpa 70e is is it's a standard for electrical safety in the workplace issued by national fire protection association so that's right now the most commanding standard as far as electrical safety is concerned here is a picture of the standard and my certification is basically in this area and i have trained like almost thousand of professionals in this area and uh, if you look into the articles or section of this standard in the article 20 you can see that the article 120 basically talks about the loto program establishing an electrically safe work condition so that's basically the uh, loto within the nfpa 70e so we have the choice that we opt for the detailed trainings of nfpa 70e so there we can learn the loto as well and the other elements of electrical safety program too so if we go inside article 120 of nfpa 70e so these are the topics covered there the overall loto program principles equipments which are used the procedures which are used and what is the process for establishing and verifying the safe work condition here is a sample loto program uh, as part of annex g from nfpa 70e which guides you how to develop the overall program and how how to write down the procedures okay i just want to share few quick uh, few quick points uh, from my experience as far as electrical loto is concerned especially the overall but more focuses on electrical uh, uh 1910.147 is the most cited one due to severity what do we mean by that uh if you understand the american or osha system there they record the violations so when we use the word uh citation here this means that industries have a lot of violations in the area of loto so basically this is one area in which people are very careless and uh, there are a lot of violations and there are different activities which are quite important like inspection preventive maintenance repair calibration installation and adjustment okay affected and authorized are important words we have to take care and uh, while we are working on some systems we have to be careful with the authority of the authorized employees affected employees cannot do that authorized employees have to do and uh, we should remember that the normal on off switch is not in the routine loto energy isolation device is has its own operational purpose loto device is separate although it can control that switch definitely it will control that switch but the loto device has to be separate that's a very important point along with the normal operation of the device and then the loto is changed sometime when we have the stored energies like the case of capacitors or maybe some higher stored energies sometime we have multiple locks so there we have another terminology like primary authorized employee who is uh, holding the main keys and then he has a lot of other people or the multiple authorized employees under his command who are looking after the overall process shift change is very important and always remember when we when you study loto when you talk about loto the year 1990 is very important always remember because in this year uh, a law was made in the us that every manufacturer has to keep the loto provision in every equipment they are manufacturing so that's why for the last 20 plus years if you take any uh, equipment from the us industry the loto provision would be there automatically but maybe sometime you are importing from china or maybe some middle east country or some other part maybe you see that the loto provision is not there but uh, that deficiency you will never find in the us system because they have that as their legislative requirement since 1990 so guys i will not take much time just to motivate you people if you want if you want to get the uh, uh, expert level knowledge in nfpa 70e this is something we can help you we are uh, uh, we are like right now we have offered our own certification program in electrical safety 
in which we cover the foundation and advanced courses of electrical maintenance and uh, the uh, expertise of 70E. And then we also help the professionals to prepare uh, for the certifications from NFPA, that's NFPA CESCP. So any one of you interested in that can always contact us. That's just our quick portfolio. Uh, we have conducted the sessions on the different regulatory authorities. We have delivered the session for over over thousand professionals to a lot of power plants uh, where I have been went to the plants. I have trained their operations team on this LOTO, the overall electrical safety, and we have implemented the uh, programs there at their work sites. So that's all from my side. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here in this meeting. And in future, if uh, any queries there or any guidance is required, I would love to answer or address that. Thank you so much. OK. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. Bilal. We are glad uh, you joined us today. And uh, I hope you remain around. So if there is any further questions we'll, for you, we we'll throw it to you. OK, so thank you very much for joining. Uh, without wasting yeah. much time, I yeah, Thank you so much, but I would, I would just like to leave the session due to another meeting. So I would just request that if there is any query or question, you can just pass on to me. I would love to address that. Okay. I just okay. want to excuse for that. That is okay. fine. Thank you. If there is any question that requires your attention uh, personally, then I will pass it to you. Others, we can handle it here. All right. It would be my pleasure. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Okay. Without wasting much time, I will call on Mr. Stephen to, to contribute on the topic. Okay. Well, uh, from uh, the last uh, speaker, he has really, and also Mr. Johnson, you guys have really done uh, justice, you know, to most of uh, um, what LOTO is all about. Uh, as we know, LOTO, though it seems to be a very small uh, topic, but it has a kind of um, a wider view, you know, and um, the procedures, a standard, you know, and just like what the last speaker said, uh, one of the acceptable standards that are used globally are that of uh, um, OSHA, uh, which is a highly respected standard globally, as we all know as a safety professional. But I would just like to say one or two things which um, probably have not been said or maybe has been touched from, from one point or the other because there's what we call the fatal five main causes of lotal injuries, okay? One is that uh, uh, when there's a failure, uh, failure to stop equipment and also failure to disconnect from power source, we also have failure to dissipate or, uh, or either bleed or neutralize residual energy. I think uh, the last speaker have said something like that. You know, in, in some cases, when we want to do the isolation of the or the logger tagout, we discover that there are some energy that are being stored. You know, in the, we call it residual energy. You know, and it is advisable that um, such energy is um, dissipated, or you know, the there's a terminology they use that you dissipate or you bleed or neutralize it. You know, you need to discharge it. You know, so that because if those you allow those energy to be stored. You discover that along the line when the maintenance work is being done, uh, such energy can be released, you know, and thereby propelling, you know, uh, the equipment and all that. So if it's electrical, we know how implicating that would be. And also there's, um, why it is also important is that uh, when we don't implement LOTO program, we discover that during maintenance work, there could also be an incidental restart of equipment, okay? So, and also there's another, the fifth point is failure to clear the area before restarting um, the equipment. After all, all maintenance work has been done and all that, if in most cases, if you are not implementing the LOTO program, LOTO procedure, you discover that uh, there are tools, there are equipment, there are some other things that are just between the rotating part of an equipment and all that. So before you know it, um, that can generate uh, um, accidents or incident within the site environment. And um, another point I would like to 
uh, to to bring out is that there are there are special situations, you know, and the last speaker also pointed out that area. You know, when we talk about the uh, authorized and affected uh, individual, so we normally have some situations, like for example, when an employee is not available to remove, they may be the authorized person. What happens? Okay, and when the service the servicing of the equipment lasts longer than the shift that this uh, authorized person is uh, in charge of, okay? And when the worker who applied the lock and tag out is probably as a result of emergency or one thing or the other is not um, available for such provision. And I think, I believe a uh, provision from OSHA also gave this um, power and authority to the safety supervisor okay to the safety supervisor to remove the lock and tax system provided that they have verified or they have been verified by the employee um, employer you know that they are certified to do this and also have received specific training on how to remove such a device okay because uh, a situation can happen what happened because maybe for example somebody who who, who do the locker tag out of um, such an equipment maybe eventually there's just let me just say a kind of medical emergency and he has to leave the site at that point doesn't mean that the equipment will just lie like that after maintenance work and all that so there's a provision uh for that uh, within the osha uh, standard and also um in summary, I would just say uh, it is not because maybe when we say we are certified or we are professional as a safety professional, uh, we should always have uh, this belief that uh, uh, we could just do some certain things. We need a level of expertise in certain area. You know, it's just like what um, the last speaker said. You know, when it brings out the sources of uh, of energy, you know, these are peculiar to different industry process industry, the energy industries, and things like that. So you don't just say because you're an health and safety pro professional, you have you have the authority to do some certain things. <laughs> that is why you see there are some specific area for specific um, expertise. So you must have that, uh, we might have the general knowledge and some level of skills, but we still need some other things to be combined to make us being competent uh, in that area. That's why in the oil and gas, that's why the process industry, you discover that you, do, you don't just come with that knowledge, oh, I, I understand what is LOTO. <laughs> so you there must be there must be training on that. You must be you have a certificate, special certificate for training on, on that issue, just like the way it is done for the permit to work system as well. But these are very, very important area when it comes to the process industry that uh, we don't joke with as an health and safety practitioner. Uh, I believe I would just like to end it here so that um, other people can uh, make one or two inputs on this discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Steven. That was a very powerful contribution from there. We are so glad to have, have you here. You are uh, Thank you very most much. knowledgeable uh, in most of, almost all the topics. So thank you for uh, lending your voice. Uh, without wasting much time, I will bring on uh, Mr. Lufemi to uh, lend his voice to the uh, topic, Loto. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Safe o'clock, safety o'clock, sorry. And all other people that are present here. My God, Mr. Steven. Ah, I salute and all the uh, professionals that are in the building. So without uh, saying as in much or wasting much of our time, the uh, the, uh, the people that are uh, uh, the first, second, and the third speakers, they have touched most things about what is what the lot is all about. So I will just uh, share the little light from my own experts. Uh, I believe everybody knows the meaning of Luto for Katagout, basically on a, being used on a humans, electrical and others that has been explained earlier. So what I would just say in my own part is a 
what you should do about Lotto is that you should ensure that you visually inspect your um, the code that you want to use for the connection of your uh, of your equipment, the loose parts. Check maybe there's any damage that's been done on it, and don't uh, mainly don't send uh, maybe like uh, say like uh, take me now as uh, maybe the uh, charge uh, lead lead hand or charge hand. Then we have to work on a uh, on equipment. Uh, and I'll send somebody, maybe uh, maybe one of my crew, uh, okay, go and check. Maybe it's okay. So the best thing to be to ensure everything is fine is physically ensure you check it. So there won't be any doubt that, okay, maybe it's not okay or not. So uh, portable, portable equipment must be handled in a manner which is not to cause any damage. And after use the, the manner at which we uh, we uh, we handle our cable, we should not just uh, let me just take for example, this is my charger for uh, for phone. I will just make it like this, and I will know the way you handle your cable after use goes and sees a lot of the strength, the longevity of the cable, and how to protect it. So ensure that it's been folded in a normal manner. So it can be reused and it can last longer to avoid other things like damage, cracks, and other things. So, and most importantly, make uh, ensure you protect yourself always whenever you are working on a, a live equipment. Uh, use safe uh, use of a safe electrical practices. Use not conducting tools. Check the circuits. I mean the circuit. Sorry, and ensure all control. Uh, is they are de energized. So that one that speaks a lot of uh, how we uh, we we handle our electrical equipment. And like uh, the uh, my regard said, this is Mr. Steven, only employee who has been trained and trained, certified, and authorized should work or handle look the uh, uh, local local target equipment. Not just I have an idea, I have done it in the past. No, it's just, it's, it, there is a certificate that should be carried around to show that this place, even it doesn't have in, in a good uh, former standard uh, company, standard set company, they will know that, okay, this guy is our Loto guy. Anything Loto put to him, he will check, he will do the locking, he will, and every afterwards, then it's going to open it as well. So not just random person who I have the idea before I know it doesn't work like that. So also, uh, Luto should only be as in uh, ask supervisor if you uh, want to work on Luto. You have to ask your supervisor if you need even more than it's possible to have more than one lock on an equipment. Maybe several people want to work on it. Okay, several uh, uh, what's it, uh, several crew yeah, like that. I want to work, okay, this one, uh, we want to work on this, uh, this part of the panel, we want to monitor. So each person can go and lock it and they will be communicated between or among them that, okay, uh, I got among the lot of order as in the leader, like that, that okay, this, uh, we are going to work on this panel for this time, this time. If you finish, just not the first. So, so yeah, there just must be a kind of a communication among or between uh, the people. And uh, when you want to prepare for shutdown, understand the equipment as that, then notify other workers before you shut down the equipment. So uh, what other thing I would just uh, to want to talk about is uh, uh, when you want to isolate an equipment, please ensure that all workers are clear and in working in the area, they check the isolation properly. Attempt normal startup and above all, return control to all for neutral after you're finished uh, you're working in the area. We can uh, keep talking and talking and talking about this uh, uh, this uh, topic. It looks like something like a lot of, it's just not, no, it's not. The implication, the as in what if it's not being managed properly, the aftermath of it is always. Uh, it's uh, it's not what uh, it's not what it's yeah eventually. So it's best thing is just to ensure that it's been safeguarded, put in a normal uh, normal rights before we 
uh, say you want to put it into use. So who can remove locker and tag out? Only the employee who plays it, who put the lock on the equipment can uh, remove it or supervisor after obtaining permission from the person who has, been, who has placed the tag. So not just one other person will just say, okay, I want to remove, we we'll finish work, uh, my supervisor says, no, it doesn't work that way as well. So uh, a piece of equipment already has a lock and talk. Do I have to place my own locks on it? Just like uh, some random question that I jot down. Yes, each person working on each working on the equipment must play down lock and ensure it's been locked as well. So I will just uh, say, I will, that's my little contribution that I can uh, put on now. And I will yield back to Mr. Johnson so to allow other people to contribute their quota. Thank you so very much, everybody. It's nice to be here. Thank you, Mr. Femi. We appreciate your contribution on this topic. The, the topic of uh, Loto, you know, uh, in this situation, the Loto is uh, it's not entirely in the hands of uh, a safety. Your job is to ensure implementation. I've seen in some situations where uh, safety went and took the a key and started locking the uh, equipment. So it simply means that there is no proper uh, loto uh, energy isolation uh, procedure in that uh, organization. So implementation of energy uh, isola isolation should start from uh, uh, the procedure. There should be a proper loto procedure in place which will identify who are the authorized persons, who are the persons that are authorized to lock equipment or to de-energize an equipment. So these persons, most in most situations, are within that department. If the equipment that is going to be de-energized is uh, an electrical equipment, then the person must be an, an electrical person either electrical engineer or electrical manager. If the, uh, the equipment is mechanical, then it must be from mechanical department. And the list goes on. So what I'm trying to say is health and safety professionals should stay by the side and monitor implementation ensure that the procedure is being implemented. In some cases, uh, and in a few uh, occasions, I've witnessed a, a project manager calling safety officer, go and lock a, a, a social DB, go and lock it, and uh, they want to do maintenance. No, your job is to ensure implementation. And this implementation should go with a permit to work system. So this permit to work system will enable you identify who is going to work in that uh, energized uh, area and what are the uh, control measures that should be in place. So you have to verify that these control measures are in place, which includes the uh, energy isolation. So your job as a health and safety professional is to ensure implementation of the energy isolation procedure and not to be the one uh, doing it yourself because you have a shallow knowledge about uh, this uh, uh, equipment. You have a shallow knowledge about the, the, the functionality of the equipment. So you need to not be the one uh, doing the uh, uh, isolation, but you should be the one monitoring it and you show that the person doing it is authorized and he is uh, within that uh, set or within that department and he's fully aware of what he's doing. Okay, so without uh, wasting much time, I will uh, bring on Mr. Andrew to contribute to the topic of today. Andrew, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Jackson, uh, for having me here today and everyone 
participants here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I would say Mr. Justin has just uh, said all I wanted to uh, say, <laughs> but uh, it's very informative. Actually, in the issue regarding a uh, uh, loto, the slogan targets. In most organizations, just as uh, uh, Mr. Justin have said, the procedure most time is being compromised by the same people who are supposed to implement it. So as a health and safety professional, we must stick to the procedure and every aspect that is related to the law to and the procedure, we need to enforce, implement, and make sure it is coordinated. Because in most cases, most of the people who draw the procedure are supposed to be the one in, in charge of the procedure. They are complacent. Sometimes they take it very for granted. And that is where the health and safety uh, people. Ah, really? So, in in all, we must make sure that whoever that is in charge has to be held responsible. And again, communication is very important. We need to make sure that we communicate this procedure and the process to at all level of the organization or the site which we are working. Because when we uh, we are working on a particular plant that is being isolated, it is. It may be two ended or three uh, uh, things that they carry out their isolation. And we all understand this uh, Simon, simultaneous operations. Because of the operations of other employees in other areas, if they are not aware, they may tamper with the same line which has been isolated or is being a, a, a target or lock off in between without being aware. So we must make sure that this. Loto procedure is well communicated across the organization among all operatives. In that, we will be able to, uh, if need be, if work not supposed to go on in between the line, it should be stopped. If a party needs to be communicated, it should be communicated. Then the engineer or the supervisor or the person that is in charge who is knowledgeable about the Equipment, we must hold that person responsible to make sure that he pays attention to what he has logged at and who is working and the permit that is associated with the LOTO system have to be fully implemented. If not, after you put on the whole process and you go and sit down, you don't hold this responsible, you don't follow them up, they will take it for granted because this most of the uh, engineers and the experts who are knowledgeable about they may be carried away with other activities. So that is where our job comes in, not because we are safety professionals, we should be responsible for logger and target because we may be no base of the process. So we must carry out the audits of the loto process, carry out the audit of the people who are involved and make sure that we have ensured that the whole process has been communicated across all parties. That is my little contribution. And I hope uh, I'm understanding it. Uh, you got me right. Thank you. Over to you, Mr. Johnson. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Andrew. I, I know you are knowledgeable in this uh, uh, process safety. Uh, thank everybody that have joined and that are here. If you have, if you want to contribute, you can just uh, raise your hand. I will give you the opportunity. Or if you have question, you can raise your hand. I will give you the opportunity to contribute before we round off. Okay. Then the one thing I want to remind us is, as health and safety practitioners, you know we we don't wait for the accident to happen before we start implementing. So I think one of the aims for uh, bringing us together every week is to remind ourselves that 
we have committed, we are committed to ensuring uh, uh, safety and well-being of uh, the employees in our workplace. So we should take proactive measures and uh, ensure that the, the job is done safely and that everybody's uh, working safely. So do not wait until you have energy release related uh, accident before you start implementing uh, LOTO procedure. That is what I mean. Even though you may think that you are not in the process safety, but you have uh, equipment, you have uh, electrical uh, supplies in the workplace. So you should implement LOTO procedure. It's very, very important and it can prevent uh, any release of uh, residual energy that could cause uh, injury, okay? I will give uh, Mr. David the opportunity to contribute. Sir David, over to you. You can unmute. All right, thank you very much. It's been a very wonderful moment so far from all the speakers. In fact, everyone has spoken well regarding this uh, topic. Well, for me, it's not really a contribution, uh, just a question. However, I knew I know that uh, the topic was actually tagged, uh, log out, tag out, and the discussion has been based around this. But of recent, we've been hearing this um, acronym, you know, uh, LOTOTO, you know, uh, triad. So I don't know if anyone here could just give us more uh, clearer uh, picture about the triad, you know. What the triads really uh, depicts us or stands for, because these days what is raining or training in most organizations is lototo, logat, tagat, and triads. So I don't know if there is anyone that could, you know, give more clarification on the introduction of these triads. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. David, for your question. For me personally, I don't have uh, total uh, knowledge about that, so I'll I'll keep it open for anyone that can uh, answer. Then if we could not get a clear answer here, then I will take that question to, to Mr. Bilal and uh, I will report back to us. And this is one of the reasons for this uh, 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 webinar also, so that anything that we do not understand is an avenue for us to go and research more. So nobody knows it all. Yeah, excuse me. I may just uh, want to uh, come in there about the triad. Yeah, if we can we uh, can uh, say in the general terms when we talk about the logger, target, and triad. So uh, the, the triad in the general sense we mean that the, before the process, maybe you want to work on the equipment. The trial process should be like a verification process. It should be like a verification process before the work start. Every party, all employees, both the uh, specialist who is acquainted or is, uh, uh, who, who is an expert in the process, should ensure by way of trying at, for instance, general inspection, if the whole aspect of the process has been uh, followed up. If it, the, the, the line needs to be a uh, purge or, or need to be blinded, or there are uh, other residual uh, energy, if it has been uh, uh, dissipated, just as uh, Mr. Steven has uh, uh, said before. This is kind of a verification process before the operation starts, maybe we want to carry out a maintenance on a uh, want to carry out a, re, uh, a maintenance work on a particular plant. Before we 
continue after the whole process, the permits, everything has been uh, issued, the targets has been put in place, then there should be uh, a follow up, like a, a confirmation by all parties. A asking B, have you uh, 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 blind this line? They say yes. Have you, uh, are you aware this process is going to, this work is going to take place? That one we confirm. So all parties, we uh, affirm that the process has been actually uh, uh, carried out according to the procedure before the May work starts. So it's a kind of a verification process. Uh, uh, we can still uh, go uh, ahead and ask uh, other people who, are, uh, who have knowledge of this uh, triad to uh, clarify more. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah, Stephen, go ahead. Yes. Um, Mr. Andrew is not far fetched from the truth, actually. Um, though it's not something I've, uh, I've read in depth, but you know, sometimes there are some information you just get online, but I've not sat down to really like study it, which is the tryout, like the Lototo. The, the, the last TO means tryout, log out, tag out, tryout. Just like as Mr. Andrew have said, is perfectly correct because uh, is part of uh, is a new system that has been introduced into the procedure. It's it, you know into the step, you know. So I won't comply with all process in the procedure before, just like he said, before the main task is to be carried out. After applying everything, lock you lock the the isolation. You lock and tag everything. Then you have to do a kind of verification if all those steps you've taken, you know, has been uh, completely done properly. That is where you do what they call the trial system, you know, to to be sure before the humans, you know, go for maintenance. Uh, it's just like a recheck, you know. It's just a kind of um, a little tip um, of um, introducing into the system to just to be to be ensured that everything is uh, just like you say, you want to verify if what you have been doing, or all the steps you've taken is okay, or you want to check. So it's just uh, it's just part of the entire system, <laughs> just a kind of uh, uh, safety tips that's been put in place also during the entire process. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. If you check the chat box, I've uh, simply uh, written what I got from the internet now. So. Say so the tryout simply focus on testing the control. You have implemented the control, you have locked it. So you just want to test it before the full uh, operation start, before the full maintenance start. You want to test it to ensure that the, the, the control you have put in place is adequate to prevent any uh, re-energization. Okay, so I think uh, we have learned uh, a new thing today also, and it's good that we are all here. We are rounding off because of our time. If we have another question, any other contribution, you can uh, raise up your hand so that we... Mr. David, I think you're, you're, you are cleared, right? You understood the point. Yeah, I get the point, Claire. Actually, actually, I was thinking in this direction. This is what I knew. But just for more clarity, you know, to be yeah. sure, because since this is a very uh, special discussion, so I felt, okay, there could be someone with such a technical, um, you know, uh, uh, expertise or knowledge on this, just to clear my, my doubt. So, but this is fine because it's in line with what I actually knew before. I yeah. just wanted uh, more clarity to be sure. Yeah, and you actually uh, uh, created an opportunity for, for others to, to learn as well. Yeah, so thank you for that uh, question that uh, increased our knowledge. All right, uh, in the absence of any other question or any other comments, we'll be coming to the end of the session today. I am 
uh, very grateful to all that participated. And uh, I'm sure that we are, we are implementing all that we have learned in our uh, workplaces. So you try your possible best to implement whatever you learn. You go to your workplace, you try to implement it to, uh, to add to the safety uh, measure in your workplace. Okay. So I'm grateful for all that have attended. And uh, in the absence of uh, any other question, we'll be rounding off. Who is, who is uh, John? We are, we are rounding off while you join. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you for joining. So anyone that need the, the video, we'll make the uh, video available for, for you. Thank you very much. It's a, thank you, Steve. It's a pleasure to be with you guys for this discussion today. Thank you. Thank you, Femi. Thank you, David. Thank you, Ron. Uh, who is that? Uh, Kenneth, thank you for joining. Thank you. So, how uh, will I get the video? You, I have your number, right? Or oh, you have my number? You can chat me. So I will just share the link with you. Just drop your number on the sh uh, chat box quickly. I don't think share I have the link. Share the video link. I think, I think. Okay. All right now, it's nice uh, seeing everybody's face here. And uh, please do enjoy your weekend. Mr. CV. All right. Don't drink right. and walk. Don't drink <laughs> and walk. Walk only. Don't drink. It's weekend. <laughs> <laughs> it's weekend. We have to enjoy ourselves, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right now. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Player. I'm yeah. so sorry. I I I was held up at work. We we are trying to change to night duty. I'm so